just some kind of terminology here before we go on um, and to kind of compare it with with other things that you hear about. Chris was talking about top down stuff a moment ago, right? Top down with, uh, you know, Supreme Court decisions, right? Go vote, go vote. That's what you hear. That's more of um, one of these other approaches. And so we want to kind of differentiate. Um, Jane McAlevey in her book, No uh, Shortcuts, um, I think lays out a pretty good uh, uh, distinction between these various things. Most of what you hear from organizations are actually a form of either advocacy or mobilizing. Uh, advocacy is when you want to create social change by basic, basically asking others to, to do stuff, asking the people in power to do things for you. Um, you advocate for your group to them and say, you know, please pass this bill or please pass this law or something like that, right? Um, and so it's very much based in this idea of there being um, a quote elite, right? Some some group of um, elite professional people who make the decisions and not ordinary people. We're just asking the professional people to do stuff for us. Uh, and that's not what we mean by organizing. It's also not what, uh, what we term mobilizing, uh, which is these, uh, a lot of the stuff you see around the Democratic Party. Mobilizing is not meant to build a mass movement. It's not meant to change people's minds. It's not meant to develop community power. It's still meant to just get more Democrats out to the polls to vote, that sort of thing, right? Um, it's, um, it's still very limited to um, the types of um, uh, political structures and hierarchy that exist today, as opposed to building something new and different, building that grassroots democracy that's missing from today's society. Um, and again, that's that's what organizing is all about. It's building that grassroots alternative to the very top-down formal hierarchy method that you see in advocacy and mobilizing. It's it's focusing on a mass movement of ordinary people getting involved in, in their community and making decisions together as a community instead of representatives and professionals and elite, so to speak, people making decisions supposedly on our behalf. Um, so again, it's it's that different mindset. We're not just advocating ideas. We're not just mobilizing people to vote or take some action or whatever. Organizing is this mass movement of ordinary people to create actually grassroots democratic structures, which means that we're teaching each other what grassroots democracy means. We're teaching each other how to be, um, you know, active citizens, so to speak, and uh, teaching each other how to be leaders. Instead of there being professionals that lead for us, we're teaching each other how to lead. We're we're teaching, you know, all of us leading together. That's what grassroots democracy is about. Um, and as you do that, you know, leaders will will naturally emerge from your organizing efforts. Uh, if you're doing it correctly, you'll have lots of leaders emerge as they learn, right? As as they attend things such as this, this one on one call, right? As people learn skills, they'll they'll naturally um, take on bigger and bigger organizing projects, and they'll work together with more organizations, and we build bigger movements as we go. So, any comments on that, Chris? Yeah, just to, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> um, I coughed and I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> no, but I think these are, you know, it's a good, there's nothing wrong with advocacy, right? Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with mobilizing, right? The, and, and there are some individuals that you will encounter and that you will engage um, that are only going to ever mobilize, right? They're never going to pick it up and, and start organizing, but they'll show up to everything, right? So we, we shouldn't exclude people based on where their their level of engagement is. Um, but, you know, the idea, what, what, or what Garrett was saying about organizing at the bottom, you know, throws me back to to Abby Hoffman. Um, you know, he, he talked about leaderful movements. Um, and, and when you look at a, a decentralized grassroots you know, movement, when you look at anarchist, um, you know, bottom bottom left organ organizing projects and things like that, you may not see your traditional hierarchy of power, but there's definitely a natural division of labor, right? Organizers step up, um, people fall into roles. Um, and then that's when it's really key, right? A, a key part of organizing is democracy too. Um, once we start to have the, you know, these kind of natural leadership roles falling into place, we've got to make sure they're accountable. We've, not, we've got to make sure that they're, you know, representing the group democratically. Um, you know, I, I, 
during Occupy, my student group, the Radical Student Union, modeled um, something we did off of Abby Hoffman. And that is Abby Hoffman with the Yippies, Y-I-P-P, uh, not hippies, um, <laughs> but with the Yippies, the Youth International Party, the Y-I-P, uh, was, you know, who Hoffman primarily was organizing with, um, which in many ways was more as much a theater group as an activist, you know, orientation. But he would give, they would go to protests and they'd give everyone a button that says theater. Um, and, you know, it was just a, sim a way to symbolize that, you know, the, the people's movements are powered by the people. Um, and so when our, our student group showed up to our first uh, Occupy GA, God, it was a decade ago, I can't believe that, but um, when we showed up, we had buttons that we were able to make on campus for almost no cost. Uh, and they had our red star and they had the word leader. Um, and we'd give them to people and they would say, we don't have leaders. And we'd point out if we all wear them, then we're all leaders, right? So um, that level of ownership, it is really important to growing an organization. Not that, you know, thinking back to that Abby Hoffman quote just previously, um, that's why he wants people to organize around things that they're passionate about, things that tie into their skills, um, because he wants them to take ownership of it. He, want, he would talk about movements as, um, you know, obviously movements are evolving things, um, it's just the nature of basically anything societal, but especially something that's trying to change society. You know, it's got to be fluid and shifting. Um, but Abby Hoffman wanted movements that in many, in many ways weren't defined until the people started to define them, until the people engaged started to give them shape. Um, and, and he very much lived off that mystique um, of we never know what they're going to do. Um, but yeah, you know, we've got to make sure that we're, you know, finding out where people are and meeting them where they are or where they are. And, uh, you know, as we get through to organizers, um, I always tell a volunteer when I when I'm working with people with volunteers, you know, I tell people maybe maybe one in 10 will if you can respond immediately, as soon as someone volunteers with the organization, you can respond within minutes and maybe one in 10 will ever respond to you at all even though they just said they want to help, right? Maybe one in a hundred will show up and do something. And maybe one in a thousand is going to be your organizer. Um, you know, somebody that takes charge and starts organizing other people, starts training and developing other people um, and starts leading. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, we shouldn't see these as, um, even, you know, even though they're listed as three separate things, um, you know, I think there's kind of gray areas between them where they overlap and then you can help progress people, you know, through each phase to get more and more and more engaged um, from the point that, you know, with advocacy, it's like they'll share a Facebook post or they'll donate uh, to a project, um, you know, but if we can move them to actually showing up, which is the mobilizing, you know, we move another level and then um, you know, the, obviously the end goal that's not achievable for everyone is to move them into that organizing goal. Yeah, and to be clear, you know, advocacy and mobilizing have their, um, their tools in your toolkit and they have their purpose and they have their times when they're useful. But so many organizations stop there as their only strategy. They say, I do advocacy and that's it. So we want to make sure that we're reaching the level of organizing and that we have a pathway to get um, members trained and, and all to become new organizers as we go. Um, so that'll be something in a slide later on. So real quick, Scout Trooper mm -hmm. on YouTube wants to know, do you think some of the trigger laws regarding abortion will be prevented across the country due to public opinion? And the reason I'm reading it is because I think it, thinking about things and you know, advocacy, mobilizing, organizing is a good way to kind of evaluate that question. Um, the Democrats are not even trying to mobilize right now, right? <laughs> yep. um, they're in a situation where, you know, whether you agree with the political feasibility of things or the, the tactic or the risks involved with some of the things, you know, there's multiple avenues that the Democrats could take um, to try to force action on, um, 
you know, abortion rights. Well, and that could be local, or, I mean, that could be federally or that could be statewide, right? Because um, <clears throat> that's generally the two bodies that are, are dealing with this. Though so now federal is out of the game, right? They just passed it down to states. Um, but, you know, federally, the, the Women's Health Protection Act is, is in, it's ready, right? It can be voted on and passed right now to federally codify um, in law rather than legal precedent. But there's a problem with that. For the Democrats to mobilize for that, they have to be able to pass it. They can't. Um, because frankly, the, the Democrats fundamentally have never been a pro-choice party. They've been a party that you know fundraises on pro-choice and that, that uses as a, a bludgeon in um, you know in in electoral coercion. But uh, when it comes down to the reality, you know Joe Biden opposed Roe when it came out. He voted twice to allow states to overturn Roe. In 2016, they ran. You know, an, an anti-choice vice presidential candidate in Tim Kaine, right? The reality is, even though they could pass it today, the Democrats have empowered new, so enough anti-choice Democrats that they can't mobilize people because Ooh. they'd be mobilizing the people for something they can't actually achieve. So they went straight to, you know, they've never moved past advocacy. Donate money. Vote for us, Right. Um, what Scout Troop is asking in many ways is can we organize around this? Um, you know, I think a lot of the trigger laws, I don't see, think we'll see them stopped. Um, Michigan's trigger law was from 1931. It's almost 100 years old. And it just, you know, it just kicked in. Um, and I think that's what a lot of them are going to do is just kick in. I think they'll kick in and there'll be a bunch of court battles um, you know, but how do we actually oppose this? You know, how do you change people's minds and get them to um, to actually overturn these laws? Um, it comes down to organizing, right? Can we fill the capital? Can we engage in you know mass civil disobedience? Um, can we shut shit down, right? Because um, if we're, those those are the kind of things you you know you can do, can we fill the streets with people? Um, and, and apply enough political pressure to change the political reality in those states. And I think it varies so much state to state. Um, you know, you look at it, Arizona, women, see, you know, stormed the Capitol, um, you know, tear gas. And so there are definitely states where there's, you know, active confrontation over this. Um, but I don't know that it's going to stop you know, any of the uh, um, the stuff to go through, right? But yeah, as Scott, you know, Trooper says, you know, we, public opinion can sway a lot of things, um, which I absolutely agree with. I think the, the problem is that, that these laws were set to go in without any action. Um, so our public opinion is about pushing back and reversing, um, not so much about trying to stop it from, from happening in the first place. And in the case of the, the trigger law specifically, and, you know, it all comes back to that community engagement thing, right? Uh, access to abortion is a majoritarian position. The, the most Americans want some level of access to abortion. Um, you know, so both Republicans and Democratic Democrats are taking anti-majoritarian positions here. Um, so how do we, you know, turn people out? Uh, what does, you know, what does that look like? The organizing look like to overcome it? It's, um, a very big question, um, that I feel like, you know, talking to existing abortion support networks and things like that is, is the, the play, the people to be talking to, right? Garrett and I can probably talk philosophically about it, but you're, I think we we're in a position right now where we need to be talking to, to the people who are doing the work already um, and, and kind of getting some ideas and needs from them. But um, yeah, very much. Um, and some of it's going to take changes in people, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, some of these, some of there are, you know, I, Illinois is voting today and God help us that the Hitler quoting Mary Miller that represents the west side of my town loses. Um, but when you're dealing with people that literally quote Hitler and she thanked 
Trump for saving white babies this week. Um, you know, in the case of a Mary Miller, she's just got to go. <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and right now, you know, my hope, fingers crossed, is that she goes in her primary and it's not even a thing. Um, you know, but th there's a lot of ways we can go about it. Um, but I think with the, you know, the trigger laws, we just kind of have to accept that they're going to be put in place. And how do we go from there? Yeah, I think it illustrates um, essentially what's here, right? Just making your your support for abortion rights known is kind of the advocacy level. And, you know, that's not enough when we have representatives that don't listen to us or, you know, are very actively against <laughs> listening to us, you know, um, you know, have have their own agenda to remove abortion rights. You know, they're definitely not going to listen to us. Um, and the Democrats response is at best to mobilize to vote Democrat, right? <laughs> it's um, uh, only to vote, even though there's many other things that they could be doing. Um, and so our response to that has to be to organize around them um, and to do, you know, mass civil disobedience, um, you know, to, to hold our protests and rallies and educate others on, um, uh, you know, ways around it. As Chris said, there's a lot of um, organizations. Um, you know, I spoke to some abortion workers in Pittsburgh that has suggested, for example, a, a number of websites like I, I need an A.com where you can learn about abortions. Uh, the plant, Plan C Pills, I think it's plancpills.org maybe. Um, you know, there's uh, spreading information that we can do um, to make sure that it's out there. And ultimately, it's including all those people in our movement, right? Uh, talking before you take any radical action, um, it's talking with those folks on the ground who are most impacted by the decision and who are the workers who are already working on it to formulate a plan together on how to act. So, you know, building our organization and connections, you know, the topic of this is, is you know, ties into all that, I think. So 